This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Welcome back. I didn't do my (laughs) warm-ups. Do you feel, feel ready? Yeah, like I've got that flame in my throat that I like. In the back of my throat that I... <coughs> yep. I'm excited for this week's Caravan of Garbage because it does, in a way, loosely tie into The Mandalorian, the new Star Wars TV series. Oh, that's why we're doing this. It, that's you, why. In retrospect, hindsight is twenty twenty. It does very loosely tie into that. That's yes. right, yeah. We're watching... We watched three episodes of The Clone Wars. And not just any three episodes... Three specific episodes. Yes. First of all, if people could leave a like on this video, that would help us greatly. But the three episodes we looked at in particular... It's a classic revenge story, isn't it? Boy, is it. I, I want to say, first first off the bat, mm. it, it's a it's it's relevant because we're talking about Boba Fett. A sure. young Boba Fett. Because mm. this The Clone Wars takes place between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, correct. right? Okay, good. This is my <laughs> first exposure to The Clone Wars, <laughs> so I'm excited I got that correct. Uh, th- so this is a three-episode arc. Yes. And... I spent at least an episode and a half going, why does Boba Fett want to get revenge on Mace Window? What did Mace Window ever do to him? And then I remembered, oh, that's right, Mace Window beheaded your dad. That's right. But in fairness, he beheaded your dad in such a casual, blasé way. <laughs> like, Django Fett's like, it's yeah. time for the uh, epic battle of the ages. And then and, and Mace Window's like, nah, get wrecked, scrub. He, did, you... it, he did it like he was opening a screen door. Yeah, like, right. It was just that to kind let of the dog out. Whoosh, kind of movement. Yeah, and sure. it was done, yeah. But then I'm like, oh, that's right. So th- that's what this is about. So <laughs> that's this right. Is, so this is Boba Fett, young yep. Boba Fett, mm-hmm. is attempting to, he wants to get on a, a Jedi ship yes. that Mace Window is on so he can kill Mace that's Window. That's right. Yeah. The episodes are called... Called Death Trap, R2 Come Home, and Lethal Track Down. Ooh. We've covered some young Boba Fett stuff before. We did a non. We've covered some young Boba. Didn't do your vocal warm <laughs> We've covered some young Boba Fett stuff before, but it's a non canon comic. And this is as canon as the day is long until you they decide to it. change it. That's right. And what's interesting about this also is that they brought back Daniel Logan, who actually bloody cameoed in the last video we did, to voice young Boba Fett like he did. And also the other cadet troopers. All right. Yes. Here's the thing. Okay. So oftentimes we will talk about the Uncanny Valley, Mm -hmm. which is where you give human features to like a... Like a non human like an object. Yeah, sure. And the closer it is to being human, mm. the more unsettling it is. Until it becomes dead on. Yeah. Mm. And I think we need a new term mm-hmm. for when every character in a scene has the same weird, creepy, sneering little boy face. Because that's what we get in this. We get a bunch of... And, and that's how Boba Fett can sneak in because all the clones look exactly the same. I obviously. think it's a brilliant idea. Well, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. But first of all, I think given that the prequels are primarily concerned with trade blockades and like bureaucracy, sure. I'm sort of amazed that he got in. Like, where's his paperwork? You know what I mean? But apparently he can just walk up and be like, yeah, I'm in this group. And they're like, fine, well, identical I think that's, kid. That's what's great about this idea. I mean, the planet itself, sure, it, it makes sense, but... Dave Filoni's behind these three episodes and he's actually doing a lot of directing and writing on The Mandalorian. He said he gave more thought to these three episodes than anything else he'd done in this series up to this point. Well, he should have given more thought to making it easier for me to differentiate between all the characters. I know they all have have different haircuts, (laughs) but you could show me those characters for like a million episodes in a row and I wouldn't be like, well, the guy with the crew cut, he's he's impulsive, but the guy with the fashionable flat top, he's the leader, whatever. Like, I don't give... Do it Ninja Turtle style, give them different coloured bandanas, then I can tell them apart, all right? (laughs) Then I would know which one is cool but rude and which one is a party dude. I've seen some of Clone Wars, not all of it, Uh and they definitely do manage to differentiate between all the different clone characters. Oh, so these characters come back? Not the grown-up ones. There's some in this that do make reappearances, but but they're not like the main Clone Wars characters that then turn up in Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, right. And apparently one of them is probably in Return of the Jedi, maybe. There are some characters that I recognise in this series, obviously. Mace Windu, Anakin Skywalker, Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano. Don't know who that is. Anakin Skywalker is is much more charming than he is in the movies. They really beef up the charm for this series. They really do. Like I'm like, oh, this guy's likeable. Oh, it's Anakin Skywalker. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? Weird twist, but all right. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. There are some characters that are missing, though. Where's 3PO? There's other adventures going on. Oh, there's other adventures. Okay, that's where Ben Kenobi is. That's right, exactly. At this point, he's not known as Ben Kenobi. He's known just as... Ben can Obi these other names. These other names, yeah. <laughs> you know, Chaz it, yeah. Kenobi, I get it. Chaz Kenobi. But there's some characters that I don't re- don't recognize. So there's another Jedi pair. So there's yes. the weird crab faced man, Blue Coon. You've actually played as him in. Remember we did Jedi power battles like Yonks back. Nope, but it sounds like something I would do. <laughs> yeah. And then he's got an apprentice. Yes, 
Ahsoka Tano, who's Anakin Skywalker's apprentice initially, and oh. she then turns up in Star Wars Rebels. She's currently kind of missing in the galaxy. We're not sure the next point that she turns up in. But when she was introduced, because Clone Wars, of course, as you may know, and I'm sure people watching this know, who are massive fans of this, bigger than us, uh-huh. uh, she was a really hated character. And oh, But right. she, she grows. She becomes physically, blame. Yeah, physically, she, physically she, she does. She At certain point, she can't fit through a hallway <laughs> on one of those starships. <laughs> yeah. And she's, she becomes more wise and, and interesting and developed. And she's probably one of the more popular Star Wars characters now that exist. There you go. As a result of this series. So it's interesting because some characters never kind of quite make that transition. Mm. Like there's sympathy towards... Like young Boba Fett. I was getting like, <laughs> and all his little friends. And all his little friends. But I feel like there's sympathy towards characters like uh, Jar Jar Binks. And people yeah. remember Dexter Jetster, but there wasn't that growth from hatred to love that there was with that character. Well, I mean, sure. But I mean, Dexter Jetster <laughs> gets one scene. So you either like him or you don't, surely. <laughs> sure. And we love him. Mm, we love him. But what I wanted to say was, though, I think... This story idea in itself is excellent. The fact that you can just take this kid and just slot him in with other clone troopers. Yeah. And then he could just walk about because to do whatever. Yeah, so so the basically a young Boba Fett after the death of his father, he he falls in with a bunch of other bounty hunters, including yes. Bosk. Including, including Bosk and Aura Singh who is mentioned that Woody Harrelson's character killed her in Solo. Like, it's an oh, offhand I kind see, of mention. Right. It's like, oh, thanks for killing Aura Singh or whatever. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, yeah. and so so they want to destroy the Jedi. Yeah. They want to, they want to blow up that ship. They yeah. want to scuttle that ship. And so their plan is to get... And, and, and Boba just wants to kill Mace Windu. So yes. they decide they'll they'll get him on the ship mm. and then they'll... He thinks he's gonna uh, just get rid of Mace Window, but they want to kind of maneuver him to kill everybody. Yeah, and he's that. What I like about this is that it's sort of reminiscent of like an old Scooby Doo cartoon, <laughs> where it's often you know the, some kids will learn a lesson, be like, "Don't talk to strangers because you get in a lot of trouble." And this one, it's like, "Don't get involved in a really elaborate revenge plot because you will regret it." Because eventually he's like, "Yeah, I'm start." He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna kill Mace Window, and it's gonna be great." And he's like, "Oh no, I've chewed off a bit off more than I could chew." Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's got a blaster to the back of a hostage's head that yeah. he has to shoot on television. He's like, I don't know about this. Uh, I just wanted to kill my sweet too. Yeah. That's why you don't talk to strangers. <laughs> That's right. What I think is also interesting about his revenge is his father wasn't great. No. Like he wasn't a great person, but mm. he's just also he's technically not his father. They're the same person. They're brothers. They're the oh yeah, they are <laughs> the same. same. They're all things to all men. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. And each other. Yeah. And also, he's got so many more dads to choose from. If he just wanted to pick another dad, they're all right. But there. it's not the same because they've all got programming and oh, genetic tampering, see, right. so they're more compliant and okay. things like that. But yeah. Boba Fett doesn't. Right? Also, they've but got different haircuts than his father. <laughs> it's true. That'd assume. throw you right off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What if you, you you're like I'm going to choose a new dad, and that one's like bald with a ponytail, and you'd be like, mm, nah, bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that would be absolutely haunting that this kid is walking around the galaxy with all these clone troopers who just have the face of his dad and mm. he eventually grows into his dad. Like, it's a bizarre scenario. How fast do the clones grow? Because it's... Th- this, They're accelerated. This, okay, because yeah. this, this show... He's, he's not. Yeah, because yeah. this show opens on, like, a bunch of little cadets going to visit the Jedi ship and they're like, hey kids, this is what you're in for. Mm. And it's like, ha, ah, we're we're having fun and we're shooting we're shooting blasters at, at clay targets or whatever. But at the same time it's like, hey kids, you're gonna be involved in endless war. <laughs> we're we're fully expecting by the time you're grown adults, this this war will still be going. You're ex- fully expected to be involved. <laughs> Yeah, How well, fun's that? Yeah, that's also, that is at heart kind of one of the, the points of the prequels, this mm. clone army that the Jedi find and then go, all right, well, we'll just use this then. Yeah, right. Like the whole thing is twisted mm. and really fucked up. And this show kind of does a good job of highlighting some of the flaws of this particular ideology, which the Jedi have backed for some reason. Yeah, right. They kind of, because they've kind of been manipulated into it. But it's also interesting that you do get a bit of Boba Fett for one, being competent. We don't see a lot of that on That's screen. That's true, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Well, at this point, he's too young to know the rules, so yeah. he can break the rules. But That's true. Modern, you know, adult Boba Fett's like, he's too burdened by the rules, you know? Yeah, he's too he burdened is. by his bounty hunter handbook. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's like, mm, am I authorised to use my grappling hook? Or like, oh, my jetpack. <laughs> oh, no, I've fallen into a pit. <laughs> yeah, I'm that's dead. Right. But he's also in a position where it looks like he is going to maybe go one way. Like, he's got, he's kind of got a choice to kind of maybe be nicer as a yeah, human sure, being. Uh-huh. Or, you know, capture Han Solo and freeze him and, and whatever and end up in the bottom of a space worm. Oh, I thought that was the nice way. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or a bad way. Or a bad way. It's also the thing about th- this guy is, this kid is, you know he never gets his revenge. So it's That's a, true, it's a yeah. the whole thing's like a fool's errand if you know the story. I mean, he, be, he, be, might, hear, he might have heard on the grapevine that the emperor has apped him to death. But, but even then, and like... he'd be like, nuts. I wanted that. Yeah, right. But I think that would Maybe I can find where the body is and kick it a few times. <laughs> but that wouldn't be satisfying at all. Also, there's so much misinformation about what happened to the Jedi and, and whatever. Who knows what he actually ended up hearing. Also, are there some rumours that Mace Windu is still alive? There are rumours of that, yes. Oh, yes. Well, I know Samuel L. Jackson wants it. And, you know, with the Jedi, they can fall great distances, missing a hand like Luke did, yeah. you know, and survive. So. And he's probably a ghost as well. And he's probably a ghost as well. So how are you ever going to get your revenge, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I'd imagine that that would also inform his future where he never got that closure. You know, he kind of could have capped off his revenge and bloodlust. But like, I guess, Batman, he never gets that moment. So he's just on this endless quest to just be a dick to everybody (laughs) forever. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. What did you think about R2-D2's little side adventure, which is actually a parody of Lassie Come Home, because the episode is called R2 Come Home. Oh, I see. Where they're like, R2, go for help. We're trapped. We're trapped up this well or whatever. Yeah, right. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, because Windu and and Anakin are are, Mm. are trapped under this this bulkhead or whatever it is. Yeah. He's Uh, off having little adventures. With his little R2 friend. What's the other guy's name? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Dead, right? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He's torn to pieces. I forgot. And there's a lot of, I feel, in the prequels in particular, R2 doing a really heroic thing while everyone else is just like, R2, you dumbass. And he's like struggling with a battle droid or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> he's pushing a Star Destroyer up a hill. Yeah, the right. rest of it. He's like, come on. <laughs> and they're, they're on the radio. It's like, R2, quit messing about and come back here. And he's like, ugh. <laughs> What's, where, do we ever know, do we ever learn where R2 comes from? I mean, he's an, he's an R2 droid. There's a lot of them. He's, he's just... He's from he's, special. he's from the Queen's ship in episode oh. one. He's just on board. Mm. Like, that's the first we see of him. I'm sure there's a, probably a story in relation to where he came from and why he's special from Legends and then Cadded, like, before yeah, that. Okay, but right. the first screen appearance, he just rolls out to fix a shield, which, right, and right. that's the first time we see him. Well, mm. He's very capable, and I respect him. Me too. Now, we don't actually get Boba Fett's armor in this. That happens in later episodes of no, The Clone Wars. No, we got a booby-trapped Mandalorian helmet, though, right? That's right. That surprised me because I always just assumed that he just spray painted his dad's helmet. Right, uh huh, sure, sure. But he did use it as a booby trap. Also, there seems to be a lot of Jedi's barely escaping explosions in this just by pure chance. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but that's Star Wars movies, that's really. That's Star Wars movies, I But guess, also, yeah. they've got the Force, don't they? They've got the Force. It's probably the Force. He, Mace Windu was going to walk into that booby trap door. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. There's some very, I feel there's some very iffy uses of Force powers. What's the What's the other apprentice name? Uh, Sokotano. Sokotano. Mm. At one point, she's just like, oh, my master told me to use the Force. I'll just stand here and listen. Yes. And then she just hears some people going, there was a murder and the culprit was this person. <laughs> and she's like, I've done it. The force has told me what to... You just listen. <laughs> you didn't use the force. You used your ears, lady. And the force. The force together in, 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 jug- in conjunction. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing because there's a there's a, there's this plot where, you know, the, all the clone troopers are trying to find this traitor, you know, in the ship. Who is it? Who is it? Use the force. <laughs> Surely. There'd be a big red dot. Use yeah. your force map. Use your force vision. If, if video games have taught me nothing, just, just switch your force, force sw- vision Hit on. R1 and your force vision will come up and Boba Fett will appear as a big red marker. And then you just go up some stairs. There'll be a meter yeah. marker on there that'll get smaller and then you'll find him. Then you behead him. You behead him real quick. <laughs> yeah, but there is... We see what I think are either a nod or who knows, maybe they're the exact boots. Aura Sing's boots a spiked like Boba Fett's and shoots little darts. Oh. Now, we never see him do that in any of the movies. Never gets a chance, does he? But yeah, I guess that's where he at least got the idea for this particular weapon that he never uses in the movies. Sure, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah but he, if you look back at Empire Strikes Back, he's got those boots. I mean, maybe it's just a fashion thing. Maybe you're not a bounty hunter if you don't have them boots that shoot spikes out of them. You that's know a what very I mean? good point, yeah. yeah. And if you can't afford them like Boba Fett, you just get boots that look like that, but they <laughs> don't have the function in them, you know? Like people who got those Nike pumps or whatever, or Re- Reebok pumps that don't actually, don't actually work. Pump, yeah. Love it. I just wanted to mention as well, as I said, he does show up in later episodes and there was kind of a conclusion to the arc of his character in this particular animation. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about it. But these were cancelled. Now, there was some footage that does exist, though, unfinished. There's a showdown between Boba Fett and a bunch of bounty hunters against Count Dooku because Count Dooku, of course. Oh, Dooku. Oh, Dooku, yes. Because Dooku, of course, he got his dad to be the clone template and then I guess got him killed indirectly. 
Sure, I suppose, right, huh? yeah. But also we find out how Boba Fett got the dent in his helmet. It looks like he's been hit with a rock or something. Oh, yeah. Was he hit with a rock? <laughs> he wasn't. Oh, okay. He didn't run into a door or anything oh. like that. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't stand up. <laughs> like, he didn't open a, like a cupboard door in his kitchen and then stand up too fast. <laughs> like, oh, I forgot. I forgot I opened that door. Have you, ever, have you ever done that? Yes. God, it hurts. I know. <laughs> no, he was shot in the head. Oh, okay, that'll do uh, it. He was in a, like a, a showdown with Cad Bane, who's another famous bounty hunter who features pic- a lot in this series. I'm picturing a cowboy hat. Don't correct me. He does have a cowboy hat. What? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's like a fully armored kind of situation. Yeah, which, right. Well, they they have uh, brought back the Clone Wars, so it's entirely possible that maybe we'll see some version of that. Yeah, cool. This is the section of the uh, video, though. I like to call. Hey, here's some trivia that people will probably come at us with in the comments. And look, I'm mentioning it here so I don't get comments, a million comments forever about that. But don't you love comments? <laughs> I do. I love comments. But sometimes I leave stuff out because it's not interesting. How about if you hear a f- piece of trivia that you were going to say anyway, put it in the comments and say, I know you mentioned it, but I was going to say, <laughs> and then give us the trivia anyway. Fair point. Dave Filoni got Kevin Kiner to create music, distinct themes, I should say, oh, yes. for specific characters in this episode, like Boba Fett when he's thinking about his father. Bloom, 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 <laughs> bloom, 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 bloom. <laughs> Which is not something they'd done so much in previous episodes. You know, in television, you are limited by time and, and budget, and, but this kind of went out of its way to go. Let's not do generic y Star Wars y themes. Let's yeah, give right. them some, some moments. I have to say, having not seen this before, mm. and despite the creepy child faces, yeah. This has the sheen of quality to it. Oh yeah, it's got good. It's got good writing. It's got pretty good dialogue. Yeah. It's got good good action. It's less kind of blink and you miss it frenetic than the last Star Wars cartoon we watched, which I yeah, think right. was Rebels. No, that was Clone Wars. That was the original Clone Wars. Yeah, okay, right. which I'd love to come back to because mm-hmm. I also enjoy that a lot. Uh, another bit of trivia is in the scene where Boba Fett gets caught infiltrating the Endurance's engine room. He asks if the clone trooper is holding a DC-15A, to which the trooper replies, affirmative. However, the blaster is a DC-15S. Oh the my contradiction God. was removed when the designation DC-15S was put into Legends continuity in 2014. Thank goodness. That is embarrassing, <laughs> but I'm happy to see the rare return of the stun mode. Ah, oh, which we see, know it. Which we see once every 10 years, if that. <laughs> <laughs> People don't like to stun in this universe. They like to kill. They like to kill. Before we chuff off, though, into the great... Great Yonder Mason. <laughs> yes. That classic Star Wars expression. You know Chuff it. off into the Great Wonder. <laughs> whatever he said. They say it at the end of every Star Wars movie. They do. I know you take issue with Boba Fett perceived to be the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy because uh-huh. in the movies, I would say with the exception of the prequels where he's shown to be mostly competent as a child, uh-huh. he's a goof. Mm. You know, he's greatly feared and he does some walking around and, and snarling, but he doesn't do much to prove that he's the greatest. That's true, yeah. And he's, you, more, he's, he's flash over substance, yes. that guy, yeah. I'm wondering whether this canonical series has changed your opinion on Boba Fett in any way. Uh, it's increased my opinion of his skills, mm-hmm. and it's also increased the punchability of his face. <laughs> sure. I think, because, I mean, before, I'm like, well, this guy's got no skills. He's just he's just a, he's just a pretty suit of armour. Yeah. But I am ambivalent towards punching his face. <laughs> but now I'm like... Well, yeah, he really, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's got the potential to be a real cool badass, but also I want to punch his stupid little face. Anyways, what did you think of this show in general? Show I liked you, it. Yeah. How oh, do you mean the, the viewers? No, you, in oh, general. I liked it, I'm yeah, curious. I thought it was, thought it was yeah. good. Yeah, I'd watch some more of this. I think I'd love to do, like, specific arcs for this show, and if anyone's got one that, like, it's to cover, you know, I'd definitely come back to this. I've been meaning to watch this series for so long, mm. and it is still canon, but after watching that movie when it first came out, which is notoriously bad, which kicked off this series... I'm just like I fucking hate this, and I. <laughs> but genuinely, yeah, this becomes a really great show, and I I should work my way through it. Anyway, here's a hint for next week's episode. It's Frozen. We're doing Frozen. It's good. Good hint. <laughs> I liked it. Thanks. Give me a week and I'll puzzle it out. Don't even worry about it. I'll put it in the comments. <laughs> Terrific. I mean, despite the fact that you said it was frozen, I think it's frozen. Also, of course, if you do have a suggestion for Caravan of Garbage, we do videos here every Sunday, every Tuesday, and every Thursday. Oh, yes. Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We're going to be covering The Mandalorian on that. Maybe week to week, maybe just whenever we feel like talking about it. I'm really excited is to see it. Is it coming out week to week or is it oh, coming out, it's coming out, out week block? to week big time? Oh, my goodness, like old school television. That's right. Wow. Like your granddad's television. What did he used to watch? Dragnet, probably. <laughs> Absolutely. Just nonstop Dragnet <laughs> on Laserdisc. <laughs> with, da- with granddad. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Thanks for 
stopping on by. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.